In the last couple of videos, we've developed uh, an integral equation that is a general solution to our scattering problem, which depended on this Green's function that was the impulse response of the system uh, to a delta function. In the last video, we found that the general form of this Green's function was as follows. And in this video, we're going to relate that to the asymptotic form of this uh, scattering stationary states that we've been working with. So we, we're looking at detecting the particles very far away from the potential. So specifically, if we have uh, a coordinate system like this, we have some general target, which we're describing by V of R, which was uh, rescaled into this U of R that we have in the integral. This potential in general has some finite range, which we'll denote by A, where uh, Whenever we're further than this range, the potential is now equal to zero. And we're going to look at a detector that's very far away from the potential, we're denoting that by R. We'll also denote the vector in the direction of R by n hat. This is the unit vector. And this goes to our observation point P. Since we're integrating with respect to R prime, we only need to integrate within the range of this potential because outside of this range, uh, this goes to zero and it kills the rest of the integral. So the point R prime would be, for example, somewhere there. And what these R minus R primes stand for is this vector over here. Okay, so what we're looking at is when our point of observation is much, much further away than any point within the potential. So that means that we can approximate these quantities by something simpler. We have to be a bit careful in treating the exponential part because it's not enough to uh, simplify this in the same way that we're going to simplify this one. So for the denominator, we can say that if this vector is much, much longer than this one, then this will be approximately equal to R but to the magnitude of R, which we're just going to denote by R without a hat. So this is only for the denominator. In the complex exponential, we have a second uh, length scale, and that's given by the wavelength of the incident particles, which is implicit in this k. Remember this k is 2 pi over lambda. So it's not enough to say that r is much larger than r prime. This whole quantity uh, can be on the same scale as the wavelength. Okay, so in the case where uh, this is on the order of one, we're going to need the next order approximation to this factor. And to see what that gives, uh, we're going to consider the projection of the R prime vector into the R vector.
which has a uh, length uh, equal to uh, n hat, so the normal vector in the r direction dotted with r. This gives us the, the projection of r prime into r. In that case, we can approximate the length of this vector by the length of this one minus the extra contribution from here so that these two vectors are approximately equal to one another. In that case, this will be R and our first order correction, which is n hat dotted with R prime. In that case, we can simplify our Green's function over here. So we said that the denominator can just be approximately equal to R. So we have another R over here. And the factor in the complex exponential is now given by R minus n hat dotted with R prime. And rewriting this to uh, in a better form. We have that our Green's function uh, asymptotically will tend to this form over here. In the case where we're looking very far away from our target. So in the case where our point of detection is much, much further away than the range of the potential. Okay. In that form, we can uh, plug it back into our integral equation. And uh, putting back our uh, the form for the potential. Then we have e to the i k r that we had over here. Here we're integrating with respect to the prime variables. So this uh, factor can be taken out of the integral and we're left with something like this. When we compare it to the form of the stationary scattering states that we had in, in the first video, this was uh, the incident particles plus the scattering amplitude times the scattered waves propagating radially outwards, uh, which we have written as, uh, I'll leave it like this for now. Okay, so comparing these two expressions, we can identify the solution to the homogeneous equation as just describing our incident wave. So in the absence of a potential, that makes sense. The second term, we have the e to the ikr over r over here. That is also over here. So we can identify this term as being an expression for the scattering amplitude in our stationary states. And since this isn't a central potential in general, the scattering amplitude can depend on theta and phi. We rewrite this uh, k n hat dot r prime by what we have before. So uh, k scattering dot with r prime. Okay. 
Okay, since our ultimate goal was determining an expression for the scattering amplitude, this tells us that if we're able to evaluate this integral, we have our solution to the scattering problem. This is a bit of an odd problem though, because to evaluate this integral, we need to already know what our solution was in advance. And this solution itself depends on the scattering amplitude. Okay, so we have, we seem to have made the problem worse. We've just uh, made a circular statement of the problem. However, uh, what this expression lets us do is uh, through iterations, approximate the form of the solution and get increasingly better estimates for the scattering amplitude. In this case, this uh, iteration is given by the Born series, which is uh, kind of like a perturbative uh, treatment of, of the problem. So it's similar to perturbation theory where we'll uh, add more and more corrections to this state uh, so that we don't ever actually have to know the true uh, final form of the wave function. We can just, uh, depending on the accuracy that we want, make increasingly uh, more accurate corrections. So in the next video, we'll see uh, what the these Born series give us for the solution to our scattering problem.